Hi, this is Lars for the End of the Worlds We Know It blog. Um, while I'm waiting for, uh, well, getting all the videos edited for the Polytunnel build, um, I thought I'd uh, just do a quick tour around the Polytunnel, stick it up on YouTube, and, uh, you know, just have something out there to begin with. So, right, without further ado, let's uh, start with the plumbing end and uh, work our way down. So this is the the far end of the, the polytunnel. It's um, basically sort of the, the end of the vegetable gardens here. So we just uh, got like a massive pile of horse shit that's all been manuring down for uh, probably about I don't know four or five years. Uh, this is the main manifold for the plumbing. Uh, I've got uh, loads of photos and stuff of the build of this and I'll probably put together a video or a blog post about it. Basically what we have is um, uh, just welded, co uh, well, soldered copper pipe. Uh, you can see it is leaking a little bit. Um, there's one joint that I've marked with an arrow here that I need to resolder. Uh, the rest of it is all pretty good. You can see on the ground there it's starting to make quite a mess. Uh, so what I'll do, this is the, the master off tap and uh, basically that turns the whole manifold off. Um, this hose here, which runs the length of the polytunnel past the chickens all the way down, it goes to a, an old outside tap that we've reconnected. Um, and it's basically we've removed the tap and plumbed it straight into the hose pipe. Uh, this one of the yellow tap goes to a hose that runs down and is part of the drip irrigation system for the corn of the tomato raised bed. This one here is about a three foot length of hose and it's just, you know, got a tap on the end that we can use to fill up um, hose pipes. This is Baldy. We don't really give our chickens names because uh, they're going to end up getting eaten at some point. Um, but this one's either Baldy or Superman cape, uh, otherwise likes jeans because uh, he just follows you around pecking jeans. Uh, yeah. At the moment the, the chickens are actually in the polytunnel, which isn't particularly desirable, but I, we're still in the process of building doors to go on the sliding door assemblies at each end. Uh, actually, the, the door assemblies, uh, as you can sort of see here, are made out of timber. They're slightly wider than the ones that came with the polytunnel, and we've added some extra timber bits to mount two mounting plates on for the um, manifold and for the electronics at the other end. This uh, There's basically some screen netting there and then this section will have two sliding doors. So moving on, we've got a pot garden here, all well, the beginnings of. Um, most of these are peppers of varying descriptions. Um, we also got some tomatoes which I've just potted up from uh, paper pots there and there. We've got these tomatoes here, which are uh, probably about a week. Basically, been potted for about a week, and the rest of these are all different peppers. So, we've got sort of sweet bell peppers here, we've got uh, jalapenos here. Uh, these are the. These are mine, Home Nels and Freyas. Uh, this one's mine. It's uh, blue, they sort of come out blue and uh, are very spicy and then get quite mild as they age. This is Freya's, it's uh, called Satan's Kiss, it's uh, sort of a slightly spicy one because she prefers spicy food. And this is Heimdall's, which is uh, Jamaica Red, uh, you know, to sort of go with his Jamaican heritage. <laughs> yeah. So basically the, the, the climbing tomatoes here are just on wires, I'm not sure how well you can see that, just going up to one of the crop support beams there. And basically, I'll tr try to train these up the wires as it goes. Uh, this bin here, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, I've just topped it up with compost. These are potatoes. Um, they were left over from last year and they've been regrowing in there, so I just thought whatever, I'll top them up instead of cleaning them out. You can see here we've got potatoes in here, but we've also got loads of weeds growing in them, so I'm probably going to take these out and uh, dump them on the, on the compost heap and then repot them with new potatoes. Uh, same with this one. This centre bed here was left over from the main garden, uh, off of the original garden. It's basically sort of overgrown. There are potatoes in there from the year before. There are shallots, as you can see here, and peas. And now basically I've actually planted this out with shallots and peas, but the potatoes have just gone nuts. And where we've had it covered over with the um, with netting here, which has all fallen apart now, uh, to keep the chickens off of it over the spring, 
Uh, it's basically been a pain in the ass to weed it, and I've basically ignored it. Uh, so that's sort of something I'm going to get what I can out of it in the autumn, but for now I'm not really paying much attention to it. Uh, this is the one disused raised bed. We've got a Bernie bin in here, which I should probably remove before Heimdall tries using it in here. Uh, we've got another potato bin, also defunct, needs to get cleared out. We've got two bag pots over here, one's got tomatoes, one's got courge, not courge yet, it's got um, cucumbers, uh, like salad cucumbers. Uh, these little pots here on the, this is, we've got two of these staging things, uh, and they just hold basic trays like that. Uh, these are all um, pickling cucumbers, uh, which I really like, and I'd love to get billions of them this year. Uh, these are not more shallops, these have been mullered by the chickens over the spring, uh, while we couldn't keep them out of the garden as soon as the doors are done. This is the door from the frame from the other end. You can see the doors there. Uh, we've got four of those to do. I've, got, I've done two of them. I was having time to finish them off. Uh, we'll get the chickens out of here and keep it locked up. Uh, in this long bed here, uh, which you might remember from the other video, we have corn at one end. This is actually companion crop planted with beans or climbing beans that have been eaten. There are also courgettes in here for ground cover uh, to try and reduce the amount of light getting down to the soil level for weed. They unfortunately, thank you for your help Cockle, um, uh, got eaten by chickens. And so these guys, you know, they produce lots of eggs and stuff. But they are so <coughs> They're a pain in the ass. Yeah, interrupting me. Uh, these are all tomatoes, we've got some heritage tomatoes, we got some boring old Italian plum tomatoes which are always good in sauces and stuff. The ones at the far end are a bit of a mystery, we sort of, every year we get a load of, uh, a load of tomatoes extra f from uh, other members of the family and they usually go in and they're always a mystery. Um, last year I actually did grow uh, like really big heritage beefsteak tomatoes and they all these like weird mutant tomato shapes and they were like they were crazy, they were really nice, they were huge though and uh, nobody wanted to eat them because they all looked like really ugly and that's uh, Freya's hydroponic rig there um, at the moment there's salad greens growing in that seedlings, they've been in about a week and not really much progress to be honest um, at the moment it's just growing in uh, wood chips you can probably see there, that is the seedling for all of the seeds planted in this there is one seedling come through uh, I'm pretty disappointed about that. Oh no, oh, I tell a lie, there's one. Okay, we've got a second one, I'm happy now, fine. Okay, project back on track. Uh, this has basically got a couple of weeks until it's going to a... <laughs> until it's going to a fair as like a demonstration rig of a, a hydroponic system built from scrap. Um, with the idea that we'd uh, have it taken to schools. This whole thing actually folds flat, which is quite cool, because it's all designed to go in the back of the truck. Uh, yeah, so we've got chicken there looking guilty, we've got a pot garden, we've got some potato planters that are slowly getting recycled and cleaned up. Uh, we've got the far end with the cockerel providing musical accompaniment and uh, the similar panel here will be mounted on that crossbeam at the far end of the next to the doors uh, and that will have the uh, sort of the relay board, the temperature sensors, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and they'll control louvers which are going to go in the slots above the doors if you can see those. The slot at the far end will have uh, like louver shutters that will automatically open and close. Um, on like really hot days we'll probably also have fans in there. You can see here the chickens picking away at the weeds. Uh, yeah, okay, so uh, I think I'm running out of time on this video. So I should have about 10 minutes after editing. Okay, this has been Lars for the End of the World As We Know It blog. Uh, remember, if you click on the subscribe button the subscribe button up there I don't know I can't remember where it is one of these these two buttons here click those uh, they'll probably not do something good I don't know whatever uh, yeah support the site come to the blog we'll link it in the uh, thing join the Facebook group uh, follow us on Twitter we always update whenever we update the blog uh, whenever we add videos whenever there's a new blog post goes on our Twitter page and goes on our Facebook group um, chickens uh, so yeah, so as soon as we upload anything, that's the first place you'll hear about it. We'll sort out an RSS feed at some point for those of you that use feed readers. 
Uh, the best way you can support the blog right now, if you like what you're seeing, is subscribe, is comment, is discuss. Join the Facebook group, say hi. <coughs>